Hello and welcome to part three of this Tableau Made Easy series. In part two, we imported our earthquake data and we had a bit of a look over it, including looking at the data types that Tableau had cleverly assigned automatically to each of the columns in our data. Here we're gonna ramp everything up and actually create our very first visualization. And you are going to be blown away with how easy Tableau makes this. As we're picking up right where we left off in the last tutorial, we have got our earthquake data imported. What we wanna do now is head down to the bottom of our screen and we can see this little message saying, go to worksheet and it's pointing to something called sheet one. Now a worksheet is an exciting place. It is here that we're gonna build up all of our visualizations. So our tables or our charts or our maps or whatever else we need for turning data into something powerful to tell an important story. So let's do this. Let's head down to the bottom of the screen and let's click on sheet one. And when we do that, we can see we have this more or less blank canvas to work with. Now we have a few things going on here. We've got this big blank section taking up most of the space. And then we've got these things called pages, filters, and marks. And then we've got our list of columns over on the left of the screen here. Now I'm gonna explain and define all of this stuff in much more detail over the next few tutorials. But to start with, I just want us to dive straight in and get our hands dirty. So for now, in Tableau, please just follow exactly as I do. To start with, let's head over to the left of screen and let's just double click on latitude. And we can see that Tableau has assigned that variable automatically to the rows section of our worksheet. Next, let's do the same for longitude. So let's double click on it. And this time it has automatically put this in the columns section. So Tableau is clever enough to know the correct direction or the correct placement of latitude and longitude when dealing with a map. Now, actually, Something important, so let's just stop for one second and discuss. If you make a mistake at any point, for example, you didn't click something right, or you delete something by accident, or you move something to the wrong place, then you can just undo what you've done using the standard undo shortcut keys of Control Z on Windows or Command Z on Mac. On top of that, there is another option. So we have this nice handy undo button up here at the top left of screen. Always good to know how to reverse mistakes when learning a new tool. Anyway, at this point, we have double clicked on both latitude and longitude, and we seem to just have a single small blue dot in the middle of our screen. Not the most impressive or informative data visualization that you've probably ever come across, but that is about to change and it is about to change quickly. Let's head over to the left of screen again. And this time we are going to drag the ID variable from near the top here. We're gonna click once on that and we're gonna drag that onto the small box in the middle of the screen called detail. Now detail is in this section called marks and there are a few options here. We wanna make sure we drag it onto the detail box. So let's do that now, let's drag ID onto the detail box. Now how cool is this? We now have a world map with a blue dot representing the location of each earthquake in our data set. And we can play around with this map too. So if we have our mouse hovering on the map, up the top left, we have some options. We can zoom in, and we can zoom out with the plus and the minus buttons, or conversely, if you have a scroller on your mouse, you can just zoom in and out with that. If you want to move around within the map, then we need to select that option. So down the bottom of the menu here, we can see we have some more options. And if we select this bi-directional arrow, we can then move around within our map. So we could say zoom in and head down to New Zealand, for example, and just focus in on the earthquakes that took place there. Now, if we hover on any of our data points, we get this little tooltip pop-up, which is super useful and we can customize that. And we'll talk about that a bit later as well. Now, if we want to reset our map to the original view, we can just click this button with the drawing pin and the cross on it. 
And then the other really interesting one, and the one that is actually set by default is the selection tool. So this square with the dotted line. So if we select that option, we can actually drag that around an area of our map. And let me just zoom into that selected area now. And this actually highlights or select specific observations from the data on our map itself. And we can do things like exclude those points or keep only those data points. Now we won't play around with that too much right now, but you can see how powerful Tableau is and you can see the flexibility that it offers for stakeholders in a business, for example, being able to play around with the data in your dashboard or your visualization. So what we've got here already is fantastic, but let's keep going. Each dot here on our map shows where an earthquake occurred, but not all earthquakes were created equal. And we've got some more interesting data in our data set that we could potentially use to spice this up a little bit. So let's go back over to our list of variables on the left. And this time we are going to drag magnitude. So in other words, how powerful the earthquake was. And we're going to drag that onto the size mark. So here we go. I'm going to grab magnitude and drag it onto the size box here. Awesome. So now, instead of each dot on our map being the same size, each is now sized proportionally to the size or power of the earthquake. So this really adds another dimension to how useful, how informative our visualization is for the viewer. And you'll also notice that Tableau has very kindly added a legend for these sizes up the top right of screen there. And this is all well and good, but I think we can actually do better. I think we can make this even clearer. Let's again grab magnitude and this time let's drag it onto the color box. All right, so now our data points are not only showing the magnitude by their size, they're also showing the magnitude with a color scale ranging from light blue for smaller or less powerful earthquakes up to a darker blue for very powerful earthquakes. And again, Tableau has added a legend for this automatically up the top right. This is starting to look fantastic, but again, I think we can do better. I think we probably want a better color scale. Light blue to dark blue doesn't really speak to the power of earthquakes, at least it doesn't to me. I'd like something that really felt like we were differentiating between earthquakes that potentially would go unnoticed and those that would be extremely frightening to experience. So let's change this. If we click on the color mark here, we get this little box and here we can refine how we want our colors to work. And this is the same for each of the marks that we have here, clicking on them allows us to alter and refine our options to suit our needs. So here in the color options, let's click edit colors and we can be as specific and personalized as we want here. But for now, I'm just gonna see if there is a pre-built palette within Tableau that will give us what we want. So let's click on this drop down that starts with automatic and let's look for something that maybe goes from green all the way up to red. So let's have a go at this one down here called red, green, gold diverging. So let's click that. And then looking at this spectrum of the colors here, it actually looks like it's going from red for smaller earthquakes up to green for larger earthquakes. So let's flip that around and we can do that by just checking this reversed box. Cool, so that looks like it might work for what we are after. So let's click on apply and then okay. How cool is that? I think this looks amazing and it's much easier to interpret and much easier to feel what is happening. And that is what a good data visualization does. It tells the story really clearly without the viewer needing to put in much effort. Now with these extra features that we've added with the sizes and the colors, as a viewer, if I just scan the map here, I can see that the most powerful earthquake looks like it's probably this one here in the Philippines. So let's just zoom in on that to take a closer look. Now, something I've noticed when the tooltip that pops up when we hover over the data point on our map is that it doesn't actually tell us the location of the earthquake, it tells us the ID, the latitude, the longitude, and the magnitude, all very useful, but it doesn't tell us the location, so the country or the state where this earthquake took place. Now for our very big earthquake here, we're quite lucky as the map actually has the word 
Philippines right there. And as this one happened very close to that name, we know that this is the country where that earthquake happened. But for some of these other ones on our map out in the ocean here, unless you're some sort of geography expert, you're probably not going to know exactly where these are or which country they belong to. So let's change that. Let's add that information to our tooltip so the viewer can easily see it. And this is actually super easy to do. All we need to do is to drag our location variable from here at the top onto our tooltip mark. And once we've done that, if we head over to one of our mystery earthquakes over here, we can see that this one actually occurred within Micronesia. Very, very cool. Now, again, we can modify these tooltips in a lot of ways just by clicking on the tooltip box here. And we can see that there are a whole lot of options there. We can customize the appearance. We can customize how the text is written out. In other words, instead of the list of bullet points that we see here, you could turn that into a dynamic sentence, for example. You could change this to instead be the earthquake with ID blah occurred at this date and time. Remember, we could add that date time information in by just dragging our date time variable onto the tooltip mark. And we could continue by saying that happened at location XYZ and it had a magnitude of ABC. So a little bit like an F string in Python. I'm not going to do that right now, but please do have a play around with that if you want. Remember, the goal is really to always make the job of the viewer as easy as possible in terms of extracting the relevant information. In this particular case, I actually quite like the bullet point layout so I would most likely just keep it as it is. So let's stop here for now. We've plotted the earthquake locations, we've changed the sizes and the colors of our data points to help the viewer quickly see where the most powerful earthquakes took place and we've even added key information to the pop-up tooltip. My aim for this tutorial was really just to get our hands dirty and to have a bit of fun and also to illustrate just how quickly you can create something incredible here in Tableau. In the next three tutorials, I want us to slow down just a bit and discuss in more detail these three areas. So marks, filters, and pages. And then even more fundamental than that, why our variables over on the left have been split into two groups, a blue group at the top and then a green group at the bottom. This is all really important foundational knowledge to have to allow you to progress quickly and efficiently with Tableau into the future. So it's definitely worth us stopping and talking about them. Now, before we move on, let's make sure we learn how to do something very, very important. And that is saving our workbook so we can carry on with it next time without worrying about losing any of our hard work along the way. We will make sure that we do this at the end of each tutorial so we can just pick up from where we left off each time. Now, as we are using Tableau Public, we will be saving it to the public Tableau server rather than to our local machine. And to do this, we just need to go up to File at the top, and then let's hit Save to Tableau Public As. Now, the first time you do this, if you don't have a Tableau Public account, you'll just be prompted to create one, but this is all free and it only takes a minute or two. So if that is you, and it will be for most of you, please pause the video and do that now. Once you have created an account, when you hit Save to Tableau Public or Save to Tableau Public As, you'll be able to do so, at least after you've signed into Tableau Public by entering your username and password in the pop-up box that will appear. So once you are ready to save like I am here, you can name your workbook whatever you want. I'm going to name mine DSI Earthquake Dashboard. And then I'm going to click Save. This will take a moment or two to process, and then you'll often be prompted with a browser window opening automatically, taking you directly to your workbook on the Tableau public server, so the web-based version of your dashboard. So here is mine on screen. If you didn't get this opening up automatically, then you can just head to public.tableau.com and log in to find your project there under your profile. But how amazing is this? This is our visualization up online for anybody to access. And we, or whoever had the URL, could interact with it too. So look, we can zoom in, zoom out, we can get all of the tooltip information populating as well. Again, you can start to see how powerful Tableau can be and why so many organizations are using it to help spread insights and information throughout the business. So well done on creating this first visualization. It is looking fantastic. You should be so, so proud of that. As we learn about and define these useful features that I've just mentioned, so marks, filters, pages, and 
and our list of variables over on the left, we will of course continue to enhance our visualization and we will be adding some really, really cool functionality to it. I cannot wait for this, so I will see you in the next video.